What's up guys, it's Wheezy here and the top 100 players for FIFA 18 are live. They're all released to the public. All of the top 100 players' player stats have been released and soon the entire database is going to release. Also, the demo is right around the corner so you guys make sure you download that if you haven't already seen. I believe it's going live tonight, so the 12th of September it's going to be live for the public. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at the top 40. So you guys have seen the rest of them. What I want to do is instead of making four separate videos, I just combine the top 40 into one video. So let's break them all down now. But before we get started, please leave a like on the video. Please leave any comments down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the support. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, guys, we start with Christian Eriksen. He got a plus two increase in his overall stats. You see some big numbers jump up there. So plus two in shooting, plus three in passing. His dribbling drops down a little bit, but he also gets a plus three in physical. So he obviously had a huge year with Tottenham. Tottenham had a fantastic year, finishing second overall in the EPL. But they were awesome, and Christian Eriksen kind of led from the middle along with Deli Alley. So you've seen a lot of the Tottenham guys get upgraded, and Christian Eriksen's no uh, exception to that rule. So 87 overall for him. Arturo Vidal, he stays at an 87. His pace drops down two overall, which isn't a huge big deal because he's a CDM. He's still a bit of a workhorse there. His shooting and his passing and his dribbling, so his skill stats that I like to call that, shooting, passing, and dribbling, they all stay the same. His physical stays the same. His defending actually drops down one, but he stays at an 87. That entire Bayern team, pretty well-rounded. They've got some really dominant cards this year, so that Arturo Vidal obviously is the workhorse in the middle of that midfield. Marcelo from Real Madrid, you know, leads from the back. Actually, a very underrated card, in my opinion. He's been one of the most consistent players for Real Madrid over the last couple seasons. His pace drops down by one. His defending stays the same, and his physical drops down by one. But his dribbling actually goes up by one. So uh, his card's pretty similar to where it was last year. He gets a, a well-deserved overall addition. But in terms of being a card that probably deserved to be a little bit higher, I think he's been one of the most consistent players in the entire world. So... Um, he probably deserved a little bit higher rating. Edison Cavani. Edison Cavani's card, uh, again, similar to where he was last year. You know, he had to pick up a lot of the slack when Zlatan left from PSG, so his pace stays the same. His shooting actually dropped down by one, even though he was a goal machine last year. But his physical goes up by one, so he goes up to 81 physical. Very similar card stats to where he was this past season. Um, but an overall really good card from... Um, uh, PSG and he will make a really good striker combination along with Kylian Mbappe. Paul Pogba, one of the most popular players in the entire game, actually drops down by one to an 87 overall. His pace goes down by three, his shooting goes down by one, his passing does go up by one, but his dribbling goes down by three. He still has uh, five star skill moves, which is really important because people love to skill in this game, and Paul Pogba is no exception to that. People love to use Paul Pogba, one of the highest price cards and definitely will be including some of his special cards but uh, one of the more controversial ones that gets a downgrade especially speaking of controversy let's talk about N'Golo Kante this is one of the cards that a lot of people thought was probably rated a little too high he takes a plus four edition and a plus six edition from where he was at the start of last year when he was an 81 overall he goes up by one pace his uh, defending and his physical stay the same but his dribbling goes up and his other two skill stats stay the same, but he goes up to an 87. So similar to Paul Pogba, the exact same overall rating, um, but N'Golo Conte, would love to know your guys' thoughts. Marco Verratti, he jumps up to an 87 overall from an 85. Another card that was actually fairly surprising. A lot of people probably didn't expect him to go all the way up to an 87 uh, to say that he's in the same page as Paul Pogba and even N'Golo Conte. He's a real workhorse for PSG. But in terms of an 87 overall, that's pretty surprising. His pace drops down by three, so that kind of sucks for him. But his a lot of his stats actually jumped up from the skill positions. His shooting goes up by one. His passing goes up by one. His dribbling up by two. And his defending up by one. Jerome Boateng, this guy's taking a hit um, from where he was last year. He started last year at a 90 overall. He then dropped down to an 89 with the downgrades in winter. And now he's been downgraded to an 88. So hopefully he'll have a rebound year because he has been one of the better defenders of the last couple of years. He didn't necessarily have a uh, big year last year for Bayern Munich. But hopefully he'll have, like I said, a rebound because his pace goes down by four. His defending goes down by two and his physical down by one. So unfortunate because he is still the best uh, defender in the Bundesliga. Mesut Ozil. Mesut Ozil drops down from an 89 to an 88. He has been um, fairly inconsistent. He has uh, his ups and downs for Arsenal, especially this past year where they go 
going into the Europa League, but um, Mesut Ozil definitely one of the more lesser used cards uh, in terms of the high rated cards, just because he does have that two scar two skill two star weak foot. So not necessarily a card that people love to use. Jan Oblak, so he goes up from 87 to 88. Uh, a lot of his stats uh, slowly jump up, his reflexes jump up, his diving goes up by one. Um, but in terms of the rest of the card stats, very similar to where they were. So he jumps up from an 87 to an 88. He's slowly creeping up there, kind of becoming one of the more well-known keepers around. And has definitely established himself as the most prominent keeper in the Liga Santander. So definitely a keeper that you'll probably see in a lot of La Liga teams. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, the popular Zlatan, uh, he drops down minus seven in his pace. So that's a huge drop. That's the most noticeable thing. He drops down two overall. After a massive year with Man United, that knee injury obviously seemed to have affected his overall uh, card weight and his card stats because he drops down to an 88. And you're probably going to see him uh, still be overpriced, but the fact that his uh, pace dropped down by so much, he's going to be even less and less effective because he can't break away. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, uh, very similar to where his card was last year, but he does jump up to an 88. His hair looks absolutely ridiculous in that picture. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but his pace and his shooting stay the same. His physical goes down by two, actually, so for some reason his card stat actually goes up, even though all his stats went down. I'm not sure what's going on with that one, but uh, I've said before I don't like Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in this game. He feels like Bambi. He's too weak on the ball, but in terms of a pace or definitely one of the popular ones. Hugo Lloris, uh, he stays at an 88. His card stats kind of fluctuate. He goes up and diving, down and handling. His kicking stays the same. His reflex stay the same, and his positioning and speed. One of my more um, popular... Uh, keepers in the EPL, one of my favorite keepers to use and one of my more highly sought after keepers from the EPL. Obviously, people love David De Gea, but I found this guy to be very, very good. He's got great reflexes and I really much enjoyed him uh, in the game last year. Uh, Diego Godin. So Diego Godin stays at 65 pace and 88 overall. His defending stays the same. His physical goes down by one. Not super overly used. A lot of people use him in SBCs because he does have that high 88 rating overall. But in terms of his actual card stats, not necessarily someone that people like to use. Uh, you don't see him a lot in foot champs just because he is so slow with that 65 pace. Similar to uh, Gerard Piquet, very hard to beat on the ground, but he's not fast enough to stay with uh, a lot of the pacey strikers. Mats Hummels, very similar card to the one we previously just saw with Diego Godin. Uh, Hummels, 64 pace. You know, that's not necessarily foot champs level. Uh, he does go up in defending, so you are going to see him probably a lot more, especially considering the Bundesliga doesn't have a lot of great defenders. It's got some pacier guys, but not necessarily very high defending guys. Um, Dortmund's got a couple guys, um, obviously Jerome Boateng, but uh, not a lot of options in the Bundesliga. So Hummels, you'll probably see a little bit more of. Uh, Thiago Silva goes down from an 89 to an 88. He drops down two pace, so a big one there. And then he goes down two defending. So his age starting to kick in a little bit. He's 33 years old. And you're going to start seeing his uh, overall stat drop and drop and drop. It's still at an 88. He's still a very usable card. His pace, though, dropping down to a 72, starting to creep towards that unusable phase. Well, once they get into the 60s and the very low 70s, that's when you start questioning whether you can use him. But he is still a very, very high-rated card. Aryan Robin uh, actually jumps up from an 87 to an 88. After a bit of a rebound year with uh, Bayern Munich, he had some injury troubles the last couple of years, but you are actually are seeing him in more teams now. He is a fan favorite. A lot of people do like using Aryan Robin, and especially now that he's back up to an 88. He's not actually showing age. You know, At the age of 33 years old, he is still very, very rapid, and he is a, a great goal scorer. His shooting actually went up by one, so another very popular card in the Bundesliga. Leonardo Benucci from AC Milan. So he made the move from Juventus during the offseason. He is actually one of the more underrated cards in the game. He does play very good, especially for an 87 this year, and I'm expecting the 88 to be even better. Uh, he's got 68 pace, so he does drop down, and his defending stats and his physical stats actually stay the same. His passing goes up by two, so maybe that justifies going up to an 88, but like I said, he is one of the more usable center backs in the game, so I do expect him to see uh, him featured in a lot more teams in 18. Thiago from Bayern Munich, one of the most underrated players in the world, in my opinion. 
Uh, surprised to see he goes up to an 88, actually jumps Paul Pogba and N'Golo Kante up to an 88 overall, his, which is surprising to me because his card stats go up uh, overall by three, but his key stats, his passing and his shooting stay the same. His passing goes up by two and his dribbling goes up by one. His defending actually goes up a little bit as well by four. Uh, so I don't know if that justifies a plus three overall, but an 88 is definitely going to be an awesome card to have. Paulo Dybala. He drops down two pace from his upgraded 86 version, but he is obviously on the upswing. He's been awesome for Juventus. I expect to see a huge amount of special cards for him this year. And, you know, his card's going to be absolutely phenomenal at that 88. He does drop down to a cam, so that's an even better card to use as a cam. Uh, but once you start seeing some informs, I don't expect uh, people to be not using him as a striker uh, in their Serie A teams. Antoine Griezmann pretty much stays the same from where he was in FIFA 17. Uh, you didn't really see him too much, at least I didn't. I didn't see him feature in too many Atletico Madrid squads. 86 pace, 85 shooting, pretty much stays the same. His passing stays the same. His dribbling stays the same. So pretty much an identical card. He didn't have a great year, but he didn't have a bad year. It was a very kind of static year for Atletico Madrid. Um, so as they move into the new stadium, maybe we'll see some changes from Griezmann because he might actually jump up and uh, prove that he is one of the world-class strikers. But his card stays the same from 17. Thibaut Courtois, Thibaut Courtois was one of the most overused goalkeepers in the game. You didn't see him feature too much early on, but as the later stages of FIFA started to come around, you saw almost every team feature him. He is absolutely massive, 6'6", and he is a fantastic goalkeeper. He's got great reactions, great card stats, and plays to every one of those 89 overall stats. His card uh, stays the same overall, jumps up uh, a little bit in his diving, and his reflexes go down. But overall, very, very good card. Sergio Aguero, one of my favorites, drops down two paces. Shooting stays the same, but he stays at an 89. His physical goes up by two, so I expect to see Sergio Aguero featured in a lot of teams again. Uh, he is a fan favorite. A lot of people like to use Sergio Aguero, including myself. He's probably going to be my feature striker, especially now that Alexis has been moved to left mid. So I don't want to spoil that. I apologize. But Aguero is now going to be uh, the key man from the EPL, at least in the short term. Gareth Bale. He drops down to an 89, so he had a bit of an off year for by his standards. His uh, his face card stats pretty much stay the same. He's a right winger, uh, 94 pace, 87 shooting, 84 passing, 86 dribbling, so no real shockers there. In fact, every one of his stats stays the same, so even though he had a bit of a down year by his standards and he drops overall, his face card stats do pretty much stay the same, so uh, I expect him to have a bit of a rebound year this year for Real Madrid. Giorgio Chiellini, again, another card that pretty much stayed the same. So as we're getting these high-rated cards, uh, their overalls are going up and down, but you're seeing a lot of the face card stats pretty much stay the same. So his passing goes up by three, which isn't massive because it's only 56 overall. His dribbling goes up, but all his uh, key important stats, his defending, his pace, and his physical all stay the same. He does go up one overall, which is impressive considering he's 33 years old, starting to hit the twilight of his career, but still the most prominent center back in the Syria. Kevin De Bruyne, he jumps up by one to an 89 overall from an 88. His pace goes down by two. His shooting goes up by one. His passing goes up by two. His dribbling goes up by one. So he's on the incline. So he's starting to show that he is one of the most world-class uh, center midfielders in the game. He is the a passing machine and an assist machine for uh, Manchester City. All you have to do is watch their games and see how prominently he features in there. So I expect him to have another massive year for City. Uh, Alexis Sanchez, very sad to see him go back to left mid. So he started off last year as the left wing, went to striker in his upgrade there, the 88, and then moved back down to, or moved back over to a left mid. So he jumps up to an 89. His face guard stats, his pace, and his shooting stay the same. His passing jumps up. His dribbling goes up by one. His physical stays the same, and his defending stays the same. But again, sad to see him move to a left mid. Hopefully, some of his special cards will be uh, featured as a striker, though, again, this year, because I loved him as a striker. Gianluigi Buffon, just so timeless, this guy. You know, pushing 40, but again, moves up to an 89 after Juventus had a massive year last year. He just showed that he is ageless. He just continues to get better and better and better. Uh, he goes up to an 89. His diving goes up by two. His handling stays the same. His kicking goes up by six, which is surprising. His his reflexes stay the same. His spe uh, speed stays the same. And his positioning stays the same. Uh, but an even better card in 18 than he was in 17. 
Luka Modric stays at an 89. His pace dropped down by one, which is unfortunate, but the rest of his card stats pretty much stay the same. His uh, physical drops down by one, but still one of the most prominent players in the Liga Santander. A great passer, uh, a very well-rounded center midfielder, one of the most complete center midfielders in the entire game. So expect to see this guy in pretty much every uh, Liga Santander squad as he is just such a workhorse in the game, especially considering he gets team of the years now. David De Gea, so everyone uses this guy when they can afford him, and he plays to it. He plays to his stats, you know, 90 overall, one of the hardest keepers to beat. He's got some great reflexes, plays like he does in real life. Very frustrating to come up against because he will make a very average team fantastic. Uh, his stats actually jumped up a little bit in some areas too, including his diving uh, and his positioning, but the rest of and his speed, but his the rest of his uh, face card stats were very similar to where they were this year. So he stays at a 90. Gonzalo Higuain surprised by this one, uh, a guy who actually had a really good year in that Juventus system, but I didn't expect him to jump up to a 90. 89 is very high rated for him, uh, and 90 is even higher. So even though he got an upgrade to an 89, his pat his pace and his shooting dropped down by one apiece, and his physical, so I was surprised to see him jump up to a 90 overall. Obviously, something's going on with their overall ratings. They've changed them a little bit, but surprised to see him break into the top 10. Uh, another surprising top 10 guy for me, Tony Cruz. I know the Real Madrid had a massive year, but I wasn't uh, expecting Tony Cruz to be as part of that top 10, uh, but he did have a good year. He was in team of the season, or team of the year this past year. Uh, he does have a plus five pace addition, which only takes him up to a 50, but his shooting also goes up by one and his dribbling goes up by two. So he is a passing machine, but some of his face card stats did jump up there. So he gets a plus two overall addition from his FIFA 17 card. Eden Hazard jumps up by one after a massive year with Chelsea where they won the Premier League title. Uh, you see this card. Get special card after special card after special card. Not too many changes from his face card stats. His overall jumps up. He stays at a left wing, but he does uh, get that plus one passing. But his pace and his shooting pretty much stay the same. Still, though, one of the most fantastic cards. I had his player of the month card last year, and he was probably one of the best cards that I used the entire year. Um, so I highly recommend getting Eden Hazard. Expect another big year from him. Sergio Ramos. Uh, he jumps up. Another guy that, even though he's 31 years old, jumps up. He's actually on the incline in terms of his overall. So he goes up to a 90. He's still probably the most dominant center back in the entire world. Uh, he drops down two pace but goes up by one defending-wise. His physical stays the same, uh, but it doesn't really matter. He's just such a beast overall, and I'm sure his special his special cards will have uh, plus in, in terms of the pace. So you're, I expect to see that um, go up as the year goes on. Uh, Robert Lewandowski, he jumps up to a 91 from a 90 this past year. He gets plus one shooting. His pace stays the same, and his physical stays the same. So not too much different in terms of his face card stats, but he was such a dominant striker, uh, an excellent card in FIFA 17, and he'll probably get even better in FIFA 18. Uh, his shooting is already so high, and it's just getting higher and higher and higher. So with the amount of special cards he gets, don't be surprised if you see a 99 shooting Robert Lewandowski. Manu Neuer stays at a 92. Very hard for a lot of these guys at this point to change their overalls because uh, they are in the high 90s, so they're getting very risky, uh, especially once they start getting some special cards. They run out of room. So 92, don't expect to see uh, you know, that card get too many special cards, maybe a team of the year, maybe a team of the season. But it's hard for these keepers to get too many informs, especially at this high rating, uh, just because that card is so highly rated already, and it's already a beast card. So he'll be a beast in FIFA 18. I expect that already. Uh, number four, Luis Suarez, 92 overall. He stays at 82 pace, 90 shooting, which is one of the best shooters in the game, period. His physical goes up to 81, so now he's a lot more of a physically sound player. His dribbling does drop down by one, but that's okay. You're probably not going to notice that much from an 87 to an 86. Uh, still one of the best pure strikers, if not the best pure striker in the entire game. And his team of the year last year was absolutely monstrous. So expect this card to be very expensive right out of the gate. Neymar, so he makes that move over to PSG. His pace goes up by 1 to a 92, which is actually fairly surprising. This is his upgraded card uh, on the right there. So you're seeing that PSG version that had 84 pace. So they keep that. He, they move his passing up by 1 up to a 79. 
uh, and his dribbling actually drops down by one, but it's only down to a 94, so still super high dribbling. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that you actually see him play in some striker roles, and we'll get a striker Neymar at some point this year, because that car looks absolutely monstrous. Lionel Messi, look at how mad, look at how mad he looks. Uh, sad to see Lionel Messi lose the blonde hair, but in terms of his, car, his card stats, pretty much where he was last year, his dribbling drops down by one, but all his other stats stay the same, so he does uh, remain at number two overall. But that's okay because Lionel Messi is such a dominant player in this game. Expect him to get up to 99 at some point this year. Again, uh, FIFA 18 is going to be like every other year, 10 plus Lionel Messi special cards. And then, of course, number one, the cover boy, Cristiano Ronaldo, 32 years old. He does drop down two pace, but he jumps up one in shooting. His passing goes up by one and his dribbling drops down by one. So some give and take there. Uh, but overall, 94 rated card. He is going to be the most expensive card right out of the gate and probably throughout the entire game. Cristiano Ronaldo always is. He's always the most dominant card, and he plays to every one of his 94 stats. So don't be surprised if you see that carry on all year. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. I'd love to know what you guys think. You know, what do you think are the best players in the game, the most overrated, the most underrated, who deserve to get upgraded that didn't, who deserve to get downgraded but didn't? You know, there's some really interesting uh, changes that they made for this year's player stats, some real big increases, some real big decreases, some guys getting older, some guys getting younger. So I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the description. So leave any comments or questions that you guys have. And until next time, guys, take care. Peace.